This is piece 33. It is our fourth Greek piece, and it is titled The Niobe's Crater. The form of it is red figure with black background. And we're going to talk more about how that is done in class. The form also is that it shows scenes of gods and other humans. It is also a vase with two handles. And I didn't put in, but I should have, that it has got the um, band across the bottom and across the top. And I think those are um, palmettes. They're, you can see there, like the palm that you would wave in adoration. Uh, function is that a crater is like a bunch bowl. And it is used for mixing lots of amounts of, of goods. It could also be used for storage of food. The typical use of our uh, crater is right here. It's the calyx crater. And it's typically used to mix wine with water to dilute the wine. And um, also the function of it is to illustrate the myths of the Greek culture. And on one side of the vase or vase, whichever you prefer, is one story. And then on the other side, another story. And so we're going to look at these two stories that are on the same vase. So content. Niobe was a human. She bragged about the fact that she had 14 children, seven boys, seven girls, and Leto, who was a Greek goddess, was the mother of two, uh, a goddess and a god, Artemis and Apollo. And I don't know what Niobe was thinking, but she was just bragging that she was better than Leto because she had 14 kids. And so that hubris, I mean, crazy, like outlandish thinking about oneself, caused Leto to get so angry at Niobe that she sent down her two kids, Leto did, Apollo and Artemis, and said, kill all of Niobe's children. And they did. Here's Apollo, the god of war. Here's Artemis, the goddess of hunt. The hunt. Up closer, you can see these fine lines in the red figures that really look at that detail here on her gown, uh, his abdomen and his um, covering shawl cape. Then in addition to Apollo and Artemis, there are the children of Niobe's and some of them, not all, are shown like three fourths of a people. So we have here one son and he's cut off at the lower back and here's a daughter whose bottom legs are cut off. So they're not shown in their entirety, which is kind of uh, different in Greek art. More content. So we know the one side where Niobe and Leto are having this feud about who's better. But on this side, we're not sure what's happening. There's been three different ideas postulated that uh, here is Heracles and here is Athena. We know those two, but nothing else is really labeled. And so um, somebody has postulated that maybe this is before the Battle of Marathon and the soldiers are just hanging out, kind of hoping that Heracles will help them in the battle. Um, I've forgotten the other two thoughts about what these are about. We just don't know. Um, and here you can see on this side that we're not unsure of just that it's not active. It Well, it's not killing for sure. They're more chilling. Here's another gentleman standing there with his horse. More content to note is that um, we see, this is our piece, the figures seem to be kind of haphazard. Um, and it's their contour lines, right? It's the lines that you draw, you know, when you draw a, a tree, um, if you draw anything, a ball, whatever, the line that you use is a contour line. You're drawing the outside, the shape of it. And that's what's being done here are these contour lines to show these 
figures in motion. And that, you know, that's true here. We have contour lines, but, and here, um, but what's different among these three is that these two have real solid bases or lands or registers for the figures to stand on. And here we don't have a register. Instead, these figures are um, possibly standing on maybe is this land? Uh, is this figure laying on rock? Is this figure laying over a landform? Probably so. So the context for this piece, what makes it important? Because really, uh, specialists have said mm, the painting's not really any big deal. But what makes this one super unique is what you saw in the last slide right there, is that the figures are kind of all over the place. They're not on a register line. So what we wonder about in terms of history and art is we think that this painter was trying to capture the paintings that were being done on walls in murals in Greece. And um, the painter was also creating some depth here. Do you see um, Niobe's daughter and Niobe's son are on different levels from Artemis and Apollo and the other children. And so, probably some depth. Uh, there's no wall painting that survives to prove this out. We have written descriptions from some Romans and some Greeks, but nothing for sure. And then the last thing to know about context is that these vases in general were pretty valuable and they were very widespread. So uh, here's Athens, Greece, and where this was likely made, or it could have been in any other cities here in, in Greece. But look, they're found up here in um, places in Russia, in the Sudan, in Italy, and in France. And so we know that there was trade going um, along up, up, among these cultures and that these vases could would have been used to hold these trade items like wine and olive oil. And they were valued in these other cultures um, we're going to find some of these buried in the grave of people living here in Italy, the Etruscans. So they spread all over uh, the European Mediterranean area and North Africa.